Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we're going to be having a look at a pretty special graphics card, the GTX 650 Ti Boost. But seriously folks, this is a Kepler based card, which means it's got all those cool Kepler technologies like adaptive V-Sync, TXAA, 3 plus 1 display output natively. But the key difference between this one and the original GTX 650 Ti actually lies in a couple of different places. So number one is it has a much higher clock speed. That boost name comes from instead of a 925 megahertz frequency that it just runs at, it now has a 980 megahertz base frequency with a boost frequency that goes up to 1033 megahertz sort of on average. That's a, a typical boost clock. So it's faster in terms of frequency. It has two gigs of RAM instead of one gig of RAM with a 192 bit wide bus versus 128. And it's running on the same GK106 core. So this is a completely different animal compared to the original GeForce GTX 650 Ti. It also features support for SLI, unlike the older card. So there's an SLI finger on there and power consumption isn't that much higher. It still requires only a single 6-pin PCI Express connector. Speaking of PCI Express, it runs with PCI Express 16x 3.0, so it's compatible with all the latest motherboards, and because PCI Express is backwards compatible, it'll work with your older board too. And finally, you've got a blower fan built into the reference design. So by reference design, I mean the one that NVIDIA came up with. You'll be able to buy 650 Ti boosts from other board partners like ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, EVG, all those guys that have different cooler designs and potentially different PCB designs, but this one exhausts the air out from the card out the back of the case. So it's optimal for something like a small case with low airflow or a silence optimized case where you don't want to have to add extra fans to your case to dissipate the heat that's still inside from those, uh, those dual downdraft fans, for example. Now for a long time, Nvidia hasn't really had a solid competitor in that legitimately quite a bit lower than $200 price range. So the 650 Ti Boost comes in at $169.99, so around 170 bucks, making it a very solid competitor for something like a 7850 and the performance numbers look pretty good for it to be positioned there. It's not so much going up against the recently launched 7790 which is more of a fill-in between 7850 and 7770 on the AMD side. This is more like filling in that gap near the 7850 on the Nvidia side. So with features that it has, so such as uh, supporting Nvidia surround on a single card, SLI support with two gigs of RAM, it is a higher end card than that recently launched 7790. So why is two gigs important? Modern games, even at 1080p resolution, which yeah, even six months, a year ago, this kind of thing wasn't really happening. Modern games are actually starting to leverage more than a gig of memory without even going crazy and loading in high res special texture packs into the games. So for 1080p gaming, I would go as far as to say you should really be looking at spending the extra few bucks to get a card that has two gigs of RAM. They also dramatically improved the memory bus. So they clocked the memory at six gigahertz, and increase the bus from 128 to 192 over the regular 650 Ti. Basically what Nvidia is doing is they're modernizing the 650 Ti and making it more competitive while keeping it at a very compelling price. So who is this card actually for, I guess is the question that we should be answering. If you want to run and play games at 1080p with anti-aliasing cranked up, get yourself a 660 Ti or more. If you want to run in surround, then lean more towards the or more side and you know, get like a couple titans or something because more video memory is a good thing as soon as you start cranking up resolution. At 1080p, we were able to say get a 660 because you can turn up a little bit of anti-aliasing and you can run pretty much any modern game at playable settings at 1080p on a 660. The 650 Ti Boost fills a bit of a gap. If you want to play last generation games with settings cranked, the 650 Ti is going to take care of that. If you want to play modern games without anti-aliasing, so with fewer of the bells and whistles, and you want to save a few bucks on your gaming rig and still get support for things like a triple monitor plus an auxiliary display, still get that nice low Kepler power consumption if you're looking for an upgrade from an older card that consumes more power at idle. These Kepler cards consume almost nothing then a 650 Ti Boost is going to be a pretty good choice. Thanks for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't